Nigerians are mourning the death of Roosevelt Herbert Wigwe, the CEO of Access Bank Holdings. Wigwe, his wife, son, and others died Friday when their helicopter crashed in California. The U.S. National Transportation Safety Board said on Sunday it is investigating the cause of the crash. I spoke with Information Minister Mohamed Idris Malagai about the tragedy shortly before Nigerian Super Eagles took to the pitch against Ivory Coast in the finals of the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations. Let me use this platform to uh, commiserate with the family of uh, Chief uh, Wigwe and all the people in his company, especially the Access Bank uh, family. It's indeed a sad loss uh, for the family. Uh, the Nigerian government uh, deeply uh, regrets this loss and uh, wish that the family will have the fortitude to bear the, this loss. Uh, of course, uh, his uh, passing is a great loss to not just his family, but to the banking industry, to the financial sector, and to uh, Nigerians as a whole. Uh, indeed, he was a very hard-working man, and uh, we had hoped that he would be alive to continue to contribute his quota towards the development of our dear nation. Unfortunately, he has passed on. So uh, let's... Uh, Text all us in the feeling by most Nigerians that uh, uh, God gives life and He takes life. But we, we really do regret this and we hope that uh, God will give the family the fortitude to bear this uh, irreparable loss. This sad news is coming on the day that um, Nigeria is going to be playing in the Africa Cup of Nations final. Even uh, Peter Obe was saying that uh, the late bank president was his friend and he did not even have the spirit to go to the game. So I'm just imagining how much impact this is having on Nigerians. It did a sad, a sad situation. All Nigerians to take heart and to not to be completely dampened by this. Uh, we pray that the Super Eagles will get strength, uh, get themselves together and go ahead to win the trophy for Nigeria. No doubt it's, had, it's having a very serious impact uh, as it is when uh, death such as this of course. But again, uh, we have to pull ourselves together, give each other strength. Mohamed Idris Malaga is Nigeria's Minister of Information. He was speaking with us from uh, the capital, Abuja. We will bring you the results of that game in our postcast. In Zimbabwe, the man blamed for contributing to the dismantling of the country's main opposition, Citizens Coalition for a Change, also known as Triple C, says he was only an instrument by party members to achieve certain objectives. Segenzo Jabangu, by claiming to be the Triple C's interim secretary general, was able to get the backing of the courts to recall Triple C members from parliament and prohibit them from contesting their seats again in recent by election. Shibangu tells me that he had the authority to recall the members because the Triple C had deviated from the goals on which it was founded. I'm not the one who recalled them, but they were recalled by the party. I was only used as a vehicle uh, to achieve that uh, objective. The party was actually going into the wrong direction. Everything was centered on one person. The party was deviating from its uh, founding principles. So we had to find a way to correct those things. But the party said they do not recognize you to take the decision that you took. You don't have the uh, authority. I do. Uh, if I had no authority, I don't think I would be standing by now. And you will see the party coming together, the leadership of the party coming together, taking their rightful positions, discharging their responsibility, uh, moving forward, uh, giving again the hope of the people of Zimbabwe that there is the hope uh, we can still challenge this status quo, this establishment, and we can still occupy the, these zones that we occupied and do more in terms of service to divide. Let me get your response because some people in the opposition are saying that you did the bidding of the ruling ZANU PF. Are you working for the ZANU PF? I have never been to ZANU PF. I am bearing scars of ZANU PF. So that is a, a far fetched statement that cannot be proved. The toxic politics of our country is that anybody who has got a different opinion, anybody who has got a different way of doing things, who disagree with maybe the status quo, you are regarded as ZANU PF. So I'm not the first one to be regarded as working with ZANU PF because I've got, I hold a different opinion. 
opinion to the leadership. How do you feel? Because it sounds to me now that uh, there is no opposition now in Zimbabwe, that in parliament, President Nagagwa now has his two-thirds majority. And everybody say it's because of you. The opposition is there. Apparently, there is no leader of the opposition. But in terms of our constitution, if the leader of our political party walks away, resigns, uh, decides to fail to, to discharge his duties, the constitution is clear that uh, the vice president, who is the most senior, takes over the reins of that political party. And so I'm sure there are consultations within the party on who should take over the reins of the leadership. Coming back to ZANU PF, that they have got the two best majority, I've given them the two best majority. It's, it's not correct the assessment. ZANU PF has enjoyed the two best majority before. Even if with their two best majority, we have held the ZANU PF accounting because we went authentic opposition political party. So to me, whether they have the toothless majority or they don't have toothless majority, it doesn't matter. What matters is to hold the institution, is to hold the establishment accountable. Sigan so Shabangu is a Zimbabwe opposition politician. He was at least two people were confirmed dead after protests were held across Senegal on Friday. Demonstrators were not allowed to gather and groups were dispersed by security forces. The victims confirmed so far two men in their 20s were killed in St. Louis and in Dakar, according to local media reports. The victim in St. Louis was a student who was killed on a school campus following demonstrations in the northern city, according to a statement from the public prosecutor. Anger has mounted since President Isal last week postponed presidential elections scheduled this month. The delay came hours before official campaigning was due to begin. Parliament backed a delay until December and voted to keep Sal in power until his successor takes office, which is unlikely to be before early 2025. Sal's second term was due to end April 2nd. The president said he postponed the vote because of dispute between parliament and the constitutional council over aspiring candidates who were not allowed to stand. In an interview Friday, he said he wants to rapidly organize a national dialogue that will pave the way for a peaceful electoral process. Opposition lawmakers have filed an appeal to the constitutional court while presidential candidates appealed to the supreme court a new round of protests is planned for tuesday february 13th senegalese in the diaspora have also taken to the streets in france where a large community of senegalese lives crowds gathered saturday february 10th in major cities including Paris, bodox southwest and nice in the south thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe